Hi, I'm John. This is my show on American Scheme where I'm proving that Diana Ross is Michael Jackson's actual mother. So, you know, Michael Jackson's life, it's not just a, a life of 50 years. It's a life that was documented. And he's busy. He's, he's meeting all kinds of people. He's doing all he's busy. He's working. You know, 10 years old, basically. You know, he's actually professionally, like seriously, under contract working. You know, so he's got to do interviews. He's got to do live performances. He's just like, he's got to do all this stuff. He's got to do wardrobe. You know, you got to do makeup. Up. you got to do recordings and it's like just all oh, he's busy as hell right so you've got all of those people that he's having encounters with right he's busy as hell he's super busy so when you're trying to like document and talk about Michael Jackson's life it's like well there's only so much I can do right it's like just have an understanding there's only so much research you can do and it doesn't matter how good your research is there's going to be massive like parts of the actual whole entirety of Michael Jackson's life you can't detail put into details you can just get your pieces and try and paint a picture of a certain pe period and stuff like that and try and put across a message and stuff so uh, <clears throat> now the investigation that I'm doing I never could have done it when I was young I couldn't have even if I had had the thought and wanted to I couldn't have done it it had to take place in a time where we're in the internet now and all these videos are available and then you have like this video right here is by a guy named Scott on tape and he's at the he's saying this is the Jackson's first home in Los Angeles okay so you've got people like this going to locations like this and, and then putting forth a little bit of the information of what they use and stuff right so without having like all of this information out there that's available on YouTube I never could have done this investigation I never would have been able to find the evidence of what I needed so this investigation had to have taken place like in our modern time it's one of those things and stuff right so I'm gonna show you here some stuff and uh, it's just like I've got way more I've got way more and as I search I could find way more and more but I have to just package it down into a little thing to try and make get the point across about what I'm making the point right here so let's go ahead and get into this and stuff so this is uh, Scott on tape but yeah this is where they live now they didn't stay at this house long now there and how I got this address is two ways J. Randy Tara Borelli, he, uh, I believe that's how you pronounce the last name, he wrote a book where probably the definitive Michael Jackson biography and he mentions this address and he was friends with Michael Jackson. Okay, so J. Randy Tara Borelli, and he says he, he mentions this address and he was friends with Michael Jackson. So what I'm going to go ahead and show you first here is the thing, because I know some stuff about J. Randy Tara Borelli, is that J. Randy Tara Borelli, he was, uh, he was the head of Diana Ross's fan club out of Philadelphia, but he was more he started like working with her and stuff and then like he explains in this thing I'm not going to show all of it he explains that he actually like was working and he when he was 18 he went to work for the Supremes but that only lasted for like six months when he was actually like working employed by them but before that he's like Diana Ross is head of her fan club out of Philadelphia, but somehow he ends up because he's meeting Lo uh, Michael Jackson in Los Angeles when Michael Jackson's around 13 years old, I believe it was. So, but listen to what he says right here, just to let you know that he was working for Diane for the Supremes and stuff. You started off as a kid, what, what, 10 maybe? 10. Yeah. A Supremes fan? Yeah. And then you became, uh, you worked for the Supremes? Kind of? Yeah, no, really, I did. Yeah. I, mean, I, 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 I ran the Supremes fan club Yeah, in, was it? Uh, in, in Philadelphia uh, from the age of 10 until 19. Okay, that's the part I need you to hear. So he ran the Supremes fan club from the age of 10. Okay, he's born in 56, so that's 66. Okay, so so he starts working with the Supremes in 1966. Okay, so this is before the Jacksons come to Motown. That's the point of what I'm trying to show you here. And so um, what happens is that he was working with Diana Ross. And so when he got his first interview with Michael Jackson, when he went over there, it was because Diana Ross was in control. She was the one who manipulated and made that happen. The reason J. Randy Terraborelli has a friendship with Michael Jackson is because that J. Randy Terraborelli was the head of the fan club of the Supremes. He was working with them. This is how their encounters meet. And so what I would say there is what actually happened was that I, I think J. Randy Terraborelli was more of like a spy for Diana Ross. And she was wanting him to be friends with Michael and wanting him to be around Michael and do reporting on Michael so that she could get information about Michael when she wasn't there. 
and she wanted to get a friend, an insider. That's what people do. And you can see that that's what happened there. And that's why, like, the J. Randy Terabrelli is talking about that first house there in the Jacksons and stuff. But so when the Jacksons moved to L.A., like, it's a tricky. See, this is the thing. I don't know the exact details and the exact dates and the exact locations, how things work, <clears throat> because to get that information, you have to talk to those people to actually get it. It's tricky. Now, I know that Barry Gordy, what Barry Gordy would do with all of his artists previous, like to hear what he would do with his Motown artists is Barry Gordy would buy a house and then he would lease that house out to his artist. So his artist would pay Barry Gordy rent on a house that was actually owned by Motown. So what Barry Gordy was doing is Barry Gordy was having his artist buy himself and Motown houses. <laughs> That's what he was doing. That's like a scandalous like business thing of what uh, Barry Gordy was doing. But that's what he was doing. And then so like it says that the house there on the Scott on tape says that the house was through Barry Gordy that he it rented the house to the Jackson something like that. It's like well probably Barry Gordy probably bought that house. See, I don't know exactly though. You'd have to find out. But it's probably that Barry Gordy bought that house from Motown town and started renting it out to the Jacksons because that's what he does that that's like what he does so but there's much more to that and so now I got other pieces here I got to find the actual ones that I want here so so I know that Michael Jackson and and the Jacksons so I don't know exactly it's like was it all of them or is there two houses is there always two different locations for the Jacksons to be living before they move into the Encino house is there two different locations that they're living in or were they all living in Diana Ross's house like you know it's tricky because there's a long period of time Michael says Michael says in the book Moonwalk that he lived with Diana for a year and a half and that Diana would take him out by himself OK, so like there's a there's like I said, there's more to this stuff that I'm not going to show you, but I want I'm going to show you Diana and Michael both saying that they were living in Diana's house. OK, just so you know, that's that. So we know that they moved into the Havenhurst house and then Scott and Tape is showing that house that the Jacksons lived on. But it's like but at the same time around that period. They're also living in Diana Ross's house, but I don't know the exact dates. That's what I'm saying. Things are confusing and why we have to, if we don't talk to Diana Ross before she dies and talk to Smokey Robinson, talk to Barry Gordy before they pass away, then we don't get to get the real details. And that's what I'm saying with the fans. If you care about Michael Jackson, then you're going to force my story to come out, which is going to allow us to be able to actually interrogate these people and ask them real questions and get the date straight and get the facts correct. That's what I'm trying to do. It's because it's hard. This was when he officially signed the Jacksons to Motown. Through my relationship with Barry, I was able to meet Michael, a very special human being. When the Jackson Five first came to California, they moved in with me. Despite the negativity that has been written about them, I knew them to be a unique family. Okay, see, when they moved to California, they moved in with me. Okay, that's in her. This is Diana Ross, and this is her book, Secrets of a Sparrow. This is the audio book, okay? When they moved to California, they moved in with me. But now she doesn't tell you exactly which date or the period of time. See what I'm saying? It's like, okay, there's stuff there. And then how she says, she says, through Barry Gordy, I was able to meet Michael. And now, I say Diana Ross is Michael Jackson's mom, so, you know, but the reality of the situation is that I say it's because Barry Gordy and Joe Jackson are old friends. And then that's why Michael was given to the Jackson families because through that connection. So then Joe Jackson, because he's got musical interest and he wants to make it. And now he's got this direct connection back to Barry Gordy, a serious connection. That's how he forces Michael into work. And once Michael shows signs of that he's talented, then that's what uh, Joe then knows. OK, let's build this band. We'll take we're going to go back to Motown because we we got this connection that's where his his path is he's his, his, his focus is on that and shit right so if Barry Gordy doesn't have the friendship with Joe Jackson who's got the musical des de desires and aspirations to lead his family out of uh, Gary Indiana so if it's not be if Barry Gordy doesn't have that connection to Joe Jackson and stuff then the kid would have been given away could have been given away to anybody once they had made the decision to give the kid away the kid's going away so it, if, it, if it's not for Barry Gordy to have that friendship with Joe Jackson then Diana probably never meets Michael she probably never gets back into his life all of that stuff there's just so much the reality of because of the situation how 
fortunate she was to be able to get back into contact with Michael and have this relationship. Just like how she says, she met Michael. Michael's the one, the spare, very special kid, Michael. She, Michael and her had the friendship. It was her and Michael right from the beginning, which is so disrespectful to all of the other Jackson brothers, the way she had her special relationship with Michael and how she always talks about Mike. It's clearly obvious and blatantly obvious. And then you could say it's like, it's like, well, she saw his talent. Well, she didn't see the talent in Janet then, did she? She didn't see no talent because Janet became a big star. How come? And Janet was funny as hell. She obviously was like cute and she was funny. She couldn't sing like Michael could sing, but she could wing it good enough to be like, you could work with her, but she never did anything for Janet. Never did any, it was, she didn't have any interest in the Jackson family. She only had interest in Michael. It was Michael right off, right from the very beginning. It was always Michael. So now, Here's Michael telling you that he was living in Diana Ross's house. I, I mean, I, when I was little, I used to stay with Diana Ross, me and my brothers. We stayed with her for years. We stayed with her for years. Me and my brothers used to stay with Diana Ross. We stayed with her for years. Okay, so here's both of them confirming that there's something going on. There's at some period of time there, they're living in her house before they move into the Havenhurst house. Before that takes place, there's a period of time there where they're in Los Angeles and somehow they're living with her. But like, what are the all they're living, uh, seeing? He said him and his brothers. And it's like, well, is it just the brothers or, or is the rest of the family? Or are they over in some other house and stuff? It's like, it's, it's hard to do that uh, research and get the proper information and the dates and the facts and get everything lined out and stuff, right? But what I say is that at the point of which, because you got to think Diana Ross, when she, when Michael's living in her house, he's the, the fact, because that's Diana Ross's first house too, where she, she got her first house and she moved her mom in with her and stuff. But now next thing you know, she's letting the Jacksons come live with her. It's kind of odd. And, and why would they? Because Barry Gordy would just buy a house and rent it out to them. He would charge them rent and then have them paying for uh, buying a house for him. That's like the business tactics of what he would do. So there's no reason for him to like invite the Jacksons to move into Diana Ross's house. They don't need that. They're close enough right there. They don't need to be living with her. What's the purpose for that? But the purpose is that Diana is now gets to be reconnected with the son that she had abandoned. She abandoned her child. Now she gets to be reconnected with him. And so in, in that process of being reconnected with him, she can't hold on to the secret. She's been holding on to the secret and this stuff. She wants to tell him the truth. She's got it. She's, if this is her opportunity, she's going to tell him. That's what the song Billie Jean is about. That Diana Ross is Billie Jean and Michael's the kid in the song. That's what the song's actually about. And uh, it's about Diana Ross informing Michael Jackson that she was his real mother when Michael's like 10, 11 years old, when he's living there in her house at that time when they first moved to LA, they both just confirmed there that they were living together at some point of time. There's more to it, I could always find more information. But the song Billie Jean, this is what Billie Jean is about. And this is why nobody could ever, and people are telling me now, like some people say, oh, well, Michael says in his book Moonwalk that there never was a Billie Jean. Yeah, there never was a Billie Jean who extorted Michael, uh, was trying to extort Michael. The song it has nothing to do with that. That's what he's telling you. That yeah, he there's these girls in these groupies that are around, but he associates those girls and those groupies back to Diana Ross when Diana Ross was young and she got pregnant by Smokey Robinson and she was trying to cling on to Barry Gordy. Diana Ross is one of those type of groupie girls too. And that's why he calls her Dirty Diana and that's why he's linking her as a Billie Jean he had associates. It's a much bigger, larger understanding. But you've got to care about Michael Jackson, care about his real life, understand that he is an artist and he is more sophisticated. There's a lot more creativity going into this uh, song than what people give him credit for. And it's like, do you not know that Michael Jackson's an artist? Do you not understand the concept of what an artist actually does and how creative and how advanced and sophisticated their artwork is? It's like, just look at yourself. Could you be a football player? Do you understand? Like you can look at yourself and the difference between somebody that's like a great running back, right? And you would understand. I I can't do that, okay? But there's this thing about artists where people say, oh, look it, I could put on a hat. I could just, I could dance around like Michael Jackson. Oh, I could be a, I could be a singer if, if I had the opportunity. Boy, I could have made it. I could have been a star. No, you couldn't. You don't get it. He's an artist on a different level. 
You couldn't just be this. It's not easy to do what he's doing. But it's not as simply recognizable as it is to say, no, I couldn't be a running back. I couldn't do that, you know? A lot of people, it's, it's like real easy. It's like, could you get in the ring and fight Mike Tyson? No, you couldn't get in the ring and fight Mike Tyson. Okay, but if you were a person that could fight Mike Tyson, you would understand that, yeah, but you can't be Michael Jackson. Then you would understand the level of what it takes to reach that kind of great achievement. And these people that all claim to be Michael Jackson fans, they can't seem to understand that Michael Jackson's an artist. And maybe there's something more to his artwork than what you people have been told. And he's not telling you the truth, because how could he tell you the truth that the song is about Diana Ross being his real mother and informing him that she was his real mother when he was about 10, 11 years old living in her house? How could he tell you that? He can't tell you that. So he's got to come up with all these other things and this stuff. And through my understanding now, I can understand what he's actually talking about. Everything and actually the words of the song. So think about the reality of the situation. The Jacksons moved to Los Angeles and at some point uh, real soon there, there, Michael's living in Diana Ross's house. Okay, that's the opportunity now that Diana Ross has to reconnect with her child, which that's when their friendship started. Look at how their friendship develops to where she ends up in Michael Jackson's will as a guardian to his children to show that the longevity of their friendship and how serious it was because Diana ends up in the will over my, as a guardian to Michael's children. But this is the line right here that explains that moment in time, the moment in time when Michael Jackson's living in Diana Ross's house and Diana Ross is wanting to inform him of the truth, right? So the, she came and stood right by me. See, this is not like a, a groupy girl. She's, she, this is calm. This is a woman who's in control and has power. She came and stood right by me. A groupie comes screaming, wah, wah. She doesn't come and just stand all cool. She does a groupie. A groupie does not just come and be all cool and just stand right by me. This is something different. Take it in the reality though. This is Diana Ross coming and standing right by a young Michael Jackson in her house. She came and stood right by me. She came and stood right by me. Okay, that perfectly is explained by the understanding that Michael Jackson's living in Diana Ross's house, and this is the moment of which Diana Ross is going to come and inform Michael that she's his real mother. So this is what she would do. She came and stood right by me. Then the smell of sweet perfume, which is when you know Diana Ross, that's what she would do. She would always smell of sweet perfume. That's like her glamour and her, how, and her being beautiful. She always smelled really good. And I've got other videos documenting this and giving a better explanation of that. Then the smell of sweet perfume. That's what, see, because she's come, stands right by him. And then Michael Jackson's smelling her, how, how she smells so sweet because he still doesn't know that she's his mother. This is Diana Ross of the Supremes. At this moment, this is still, it's Diana Ross of the Supremes. She came and stood right by me. Then the smell of sweet perfume. See how he's explaining this? The words are actually explaining. He can't tell you who it is, but when you actually understand the moment of which in time that this had occurred, now you can understand the actual words of what he's actually saying. This happened much too soon. Michael's only 10, 11 years old at the time of which this is occurring. This happened much too soon, okay? When uh, all the other, like the Billy Jean stuff, right? Okay, if Billy Jean is not supposed to be true, right? It's not supposed to be true. Then there would never be a moment where Michael Jackson's in a room with this groupie and he's saying this happened much too soon, okay? so. The context of Michael Jackson sleeping with the groupie or, and then her claiming to have a kid, all of, it doesn't make any sense because he's telling you something did happen in the next line. She called me to her room. So he's admitting to you that something happened and it happened much too soon. So he's acknowledging that he's at a young age and she called me to her room. So would a groupie be so cool to walk up to Michael and smelling with the sweet perfume, she's just so cool, right? She She's so cool. And uh, it happens much too, she called me to her room. But you know, the next line is, Billie Jean's not my lover. And you people have got, you don't understand what he's saying. Billie Jean's not my lover. She's just a girl who claims that I am the one, but the kid is not my son. It's Diana Ross 
calls Michael to her room, tells Michael Jackson that he's the one, the love child of her and Smokey Robinson, but she also tells him, in public, I'm not going to admit to you being my son because the lie has become the truth and you're actually a Jackson now and you're going to remain a Jackson. So, uh, she says, I'm the one, but the kid is not my son. It's a duality of the reality of what Michael Jackson had to deal with. She embraces Michael Jackson and she rejects him. And then this is how Michael Jackson ends. Because Michael Jackson, when he's a kid, he's cool. Michael Jackson's a cool kid. There's, there's nothing wrong with that fucking kid. He's cool. But something happened in his life. And it lead, led to him not being able to develop naturally through his natural sexual progression, which he just would have experimented with and he would have done things. But what happened to him stunted that part of his life. It stopped him from wanting to develop naturally with his natural having relationships and develop his natural sexual attraction to women and his sexual experience. That didn't happen because something happened to him. It happened much too soon. Yeah, he's living with Diana Ross when she tells him. So Michael Jackson, just as he moves to Los Angeles and he's thinking he's accomplished so much with his family and he's like, oh, I'm a Jackson. We've accomplished so much. Look at, we're at Motown. Now we're living in LA. Right at that moment where he's thinking everything's great, Diana Ross calls him to the room and tells him the truth. She, she says, I'm the one, but the kid's not my son. She tells Michael, you're my child. I get banned in you as a child. So Michael, at that moment, instead of thinking what the great accomplishment he has done with the Jacksons, now he realizes he was given, he was abandoned as a child. He was abandoned as a child. And his real parents became big stars and stuff, and they never came back and got him. Joe took Michael back to them. They didn't come get Michael. Joe took Michael back to them. It's a crazy situation, but it's the real life, true story of who Michael Jackson was. And when you actually look at the real dates of what was happening in his life, and you'll see the development of what happened to him after in his life, how he developed, you'll see that this is the song of what he explained to you through his art because he couldn't tell you the truth. So the only thing of what he could do is put it down in his, in his music and leave it, leave it behind somehow. But the one thing that people couldn't overcome is that Michael was a Jackson because the lie had become the truth. And it was so true that nobody could ever see it to the point where everybody's saying the Jacksons, because I get every people, all men, women of all races keep telling me the Jacksons all look alike. They all look alike. And it's like, no, it's a brand. It's, a, it's called brand name recognition. It's called branding. You have to just understand. It's like, you don't understand what it means to like brand a product. And the way I say that is like, look at Pringles. Look at all the different Pringles. They're red cans. There's green cans. There's purple cans. There's yellow cans. They don't look alike. They're totally different color. But the can is shaped the same way and inside the chip is shaped the same way doesn't taste the same like michael doesn't sing like none of the other jacksons perform like michael they don't have his talent there's big differences but the branding of the pringles you would say oh yeah they all look alike you could have a whole 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 wall full of pringles with all these different uh in all these different colors and everybody would say they all look alike and it's like what do you mean they all look alike they're all different colors they don't they don't look alike but they're shaped the same like what they did with the jacksons they all just gave them afros and they put them in these similar outfits and they called them the jacksons they, the jackson family the jackson family that's the branding that's brand name recognition. They got they got branded as the Jackson family from Gary, Indiana, and here they are. Look at them. There's there are uh, five black boys with afros, and we dress them alike, and they're all playing music. But Michael's the only one that's really singing and dancing the way he does. Like I said, when you actually taste it, it's different. There's a difference. There's something different about it. You taste the Pringles chip. You you actually open up the each can and taste them. They taste totally different. That's what I'm saying. But when they're just packaged there on the wall, you think they all look alike. And everybody keeps saying they all look alike. They all look alike. And it's like, that's the branding of what you're talking about. But look at the reality. Do any of them sing like Michael? No, they don't dance like Michael. They're not Michael. And when you then, when you actually go and look at it again, you'll see that Michael doesn't look like them. He doesn't. The Jacksons all look alike. And since you, Michael was branded as being a Jackson and being in that family and we saw them all playing, the branding worked. It really worked. It's my tricks. They're playing these tricks, man. It's the world we live in. It's tricky fucking shit. But the tricks 
what they can't do is that Michael put in his art the actual thing right here. You know, she called me to her room. She came and stood right by me. Then the smell of sweet perfume. This happened much too soon. She calls me to her room. Diane, uh, Billy Jean's not my lover. Like, his, because he's having to say this stuff in the media that, oh, he thinks Diana's beautiful. And then, yeah, maybe he'd marry her. He's having to do stuff. But this is the song where he tells you, right? No, she's not my lover. That's not what it's about. It has nothing to do with that. My relationship with Diana Ross has nothing to do. And whatever happened in the room there had nothing to do. That's why when people tell me in the moon, book Moonwalking, oh, there's no real Billie Jean. Yeah, that story that you think that Billie Jean is about is completely bullshit. It's not it's he mixes in other things and talks about other things because he can't tell you the truth but when you actually understand the real life experience and then look at the words you and then when you can look back and see that the jacksons are just a brand that they don't look alike they're not the same you can see all of it come together there's no doubt that i'm right there's no doubt but now can I tell you like every single piece of information? Absolutely not. There's so much there and I don't have the time to do all that research and I couldn't even get that information. It'd be really difficult to get all the information of what I would want to go get. It's really difficult. But I can tell you the truth part about Diana is Michael Jackson's mom. And she told him the truth when he was living in her house at that moment she tells him and now michael's having to live around his brothers she didn't tell all the brothers hey she didn't come out and pronounce hey everybody i got a may i got a secret to tell her but that's not what she did she told she brought michael to the room and told him the truth so now michael had to come out of the room and he's dealing with his brothers and now he's got to like now he had to deal with that like i don't know how long it was until the brothers learned the truth you know i'm sure some of them probably don't even know who knows exactly what's going on there you'd have to ask them and then from their from their uh, the way they answered it i'd be able to tell you if they're lying or not and then i'd be able to ask them another question to actually because i would straight out say you're lying you that the answer you gave me was bullshit you brushed me off i understand what you're doing there you can't be giving me that kind of bullshit i'm way more too intelligent and sophisticated to be falling for your damn little well you said this so that's what it means no no i understand the way you word stuff is because you're being deceptive or you're being honest and you could tell what honesty is because they're giving you hard facts. You gotta listen, things are on a, a higher level. Is Michael Jackson a real artist or not? If he is a real artist, then why is it so easy for you to uh, understand his song? That's like the simplest piece of evidence as you can give. Everybody thinks they know what Billie Jean is about. Well then, that doesn't. That means Michael's not an artist. If his work is so easily understood and explained, then that's not an artist. That's just a pop singer. That means he's just a pop singer. He's not an artist then. So that's really how once I want to say that people, you're not fans. You're not fans. You think Michael's just some pop singer. He's just a pop singer to you, and you think you could just put on his clothes and dance around like him, and you could play pop star. That's what you people think. You've got no respect for this guy. You've got no respect that he's actually an artist. And maybe there's a lot more going on in the song Billie Jean than what you people have ever thought before. And now that it's being explained to you with serious, hardcore, uh, correlating facts and documents to show you of what these words actually mean, you look at Michael Jackson's actual life, how he uh, was affected, look at the relationship he had with Diana Ross, Everything correlates with my story because I go back and show you. I've got Diana Ross saying that she was sleeping in Smokey Robinson's house when she was 14. She was actually, and not only just sleeping in his house, she's proclaiming to be in love with him. I've got all this shit documented. I could show you Joe Jackson's history in the music business before he went to Motown, before any of the kids were born and the people he was hanging around with. That's how he knows Barry Gordy. They knew each other way before Motown. That's how Michael got put into that house. I've done this massive investigation. I've got all the, all the research, but there's so much more and things can be clarified. My story can just get better and better, but the facts remain the same. Michael was abandoned by Diana Ross when she was 14 because Smokey Robinson was 18 and it was happening at just at the time of where Smokey Robinson was building Motown records with Barry Gordy. Barry Gordy did not build Motown records on himself, by himself. He met Smokey Robinson and they built Motown records together. That's like a little fact that nobody knows. When did Smokey Robinson meet Barry Gordy? In August of 1957. 
So Michael Jackson's conceived just a few months after that event occurs. That's what fucking happened. And as soon as Michael Jackson's gone, boom, that's when the freaking record company starts to explode. They, they, uh, Smokey writes the song Shop Around, which I think is about that mo moment of where he's thinking about what to do when he gets Diana Ross pregnant. And he's thinking about what would my mom say? My mom tell me to shop around and pretty girls come a dime a dozen. You got to find one who's going to give you true love. And just because you come a young man now, there's still some things that you don't understand now. Keep your freedom for as long as you can now. My mama told me you better shop around. How the fuck he write that song what's that song about oh well, well you know he just got diana ross pregnant and they're gonna get abandoned their child he's telling you and shop around that he's like okay i understand i thought i was in love with this girl you know and i'll become a young man and i think i need to take responsibility and take care of my child but no my mama told me to shop around that you've got a lot of your life to go there's a lot more for you don't commit yourself to that moment and he let and that's why they abandoned the kid the kid goes to Jackson's. That's why the Jacksons end up being, uh, Michael ends up being the head of the band at five years old. Joe perfectly realizes that when Michael's five years old, he's just going to trust this kid, this this boxer, Joe Jackson, who's a musician and who hard working in the steel mill, never was training his children before. But now for some reason, now he's like, oh, this kid can sing. I got it. Let's put a band together. We're going to hit the road. That shit doesn't just happen like that. But when Michael shows the talent, he's like, now I got it. Okay, we're going to put a band together. We're going to Motown because this kid's got talent and I, Joe knows how to make a band. And he's like, we're going to work it. We're going to go back to Motown. But Joe Jackson's not the kind of father would have trusted Michael Jackson's talent at five years old. You're going to tell me he's going to quit everything and recognize, oh, it's this kid. This kid's got all the talent. He's going to take us all the way. Joe's not that way. And if he was that way, he would have been pushing his other kids to be doing it before. Joe already would have had a band. His girls would have been lead singers of the band. They already would have had a band before Michael come into the house. Joe would have had that shit going already. It wasn't. Not until Michael... Not until the Michael situation where Michael comes into the house. That's when it all starts to happen. Because Michael had a direct connection to Barry Gordy. And Barry Gordy's building Motown at that same time. Motown's starting to explode. My story explains everything. There's no doubt I'm right about it. That's why when Michael moves to LA, they just, oh, they just move into Diana Ross's house. Oh, no, oh that's just coincidence. Yeah, then Michael... It makes his big song. This is the song that he pushed. He tells you how Billie Jean is so important. That's why he made that iconic dance performance at Motown 25, which is Billie Jean's not a Motown song. But Michael was able to strong arm Barry Gordy. And none of the other artists were allowed to do that at that Motown 25. They all had other, they were all with other record companies. They had other songs that weren't Motown. None of them were allowed to showcase any of their other songs. But who is? Oh, Michael. Michael's allowed to do this song because he told him, I'm doing this or I'm not doing your fucking show, period. And, and if you want to make a big deal about it, I'll go tell everybody that fucking the real story. That's what fucking, that's how it happens. That's how it gets done. And you think Michael's all calm and innocent? Hell no. When it came down to it, Michael said, you fucking do this or else you got a problem with me. I'll go fucking spill the beans to everybody. Okay, yes, Michael, we'll do what you say. Okay, come on. Calm down, Michael. Calm down. We don't want to ruin it for everybody and stuff. And Michael would be like, yeah, I know. The Jacksons did raise me. He had to have some appreciation for that family that and Catherine and stuff. He can't just abandon and screw and totally destroy that. That family's legacy that family did take him in and through his relationship with that family he did end up a star and back at Motown he's not gonna be just so quick to freaking destroy that family's reputation so when am I gonna find some real Michael Jackson fans or some people that just have a brain who can understand freaking what facts are and what truth is when they're hearing it 